A day like today is the perfect showcase of the yin and yang nature of Missouri blue ribbon trout. You can go on big water with big pressure, or you can find small water with little pressure. Each has their own set of pros and cons, but at the end of the day, folks, it's build your own adventure. Just go out and get it. Oh, there is no place like home during the holidays. Being back home gives me the rare opportunity to go fish some of my favorite places here in Missouri. My old stomping grounds that I used to frequent a lot way back in the day when I was just a kid. But this one in particular, I have a love-hate relationship with. I've had some good, but I've also had some very bad days. So as that mist was moving towards the treetops and those crows were calling off, I found myself making my hike down to the river in hopes of getting on just a few fish. Wow, that's a beautiful one. That's a beautiful one right there. Nice, dude, let's freaking go. On nose to belly, this boy is speckled up. Oh, and just like that, he is back in the water. What a great way to break that skunk, man. That is so awesome. Wow, I didn't expect to get on fish so fast. This is an extremely pressured part of the river, at least from my memory. I know that it gets, uh, yeah, it gets hammered because the trout park is just up the way. So hopefully that's a good sign. Hopefully we can get on a few more as this morning progresses. And as that morning progressed, the sun and the steam set a contrast that brought so many memories of cold trips of years long past straight into my noggin. But luckily for us, as the air temp started to warm, our brisk morning started to burn off. And the further up this section we made it, the smoke on the water slowly started to rise and give way to a beautiful morning. But as it was rising, so were the fish. We were in for a really nice dry fly bite, or so I thought. This right here is the prime example why I have kind of a love-hate relationship with this river. Harrispin fishermen rolled up to, I mean, the exact same spot I was fishing. And you know what? I don't even mind that. I usually really enjoy seeing other people out on the water and I love talking to them. So that part, I didn't really mind. But what really kind of got my goat is that they high hold me. And then after I started catching fish out of this hole, so the rising pod that we had kind of meticulously set up for and then targeted, casted, and caught they started casting directly into that hole. And it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of frustrating when this river is so big and there's so much room to spread out. I don't get why some folks like to fish right on top of you. Especially, man, <laughs> when I was having to battle the fish and this dude, it was hard enough just trying to target this midge bite, let alone dodge his uh, <laughs> rooster tails flying my direction. But no worries, they passed. And I think we might have figured something out and finally got on some fish. There we go. Let's freaking go. Oh, you rat. Oh, man. Well, on a pretty pressured river, as you can see, it's always nice when the fish decide to uh, go off a nice dry fly bite instead of a, yeah, a spinner. But uh, yeah, this is what we got them on. Can't quite tell exactly what they're munching on. I think it's PMD, and this is the closest thing I have to it, but they're not being very eager. So I don't think this is an exact representation. We're just fooling the dumb ones. So it's always nice to uh, yeah, get on a current river dry bite. That's fun. Let's try and uh, let's try and replicate that. Now, I was incorrect in saying that this might have been a PMD hatch. So it was back to the box and we went with the midge this time. And it seemed to be working. We were getting bites, but they weren't taking. I was having a really hard time actually seeing my size 22 midge. 
So it took us a little while to get the, the cast dialed in number one and then sighting our fly number two. But we eventually got in there and we got another one. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Hey. Yes, yes, dude, that is what we wanted. <laughs> okay. Well, with this midge eating son of a gun, I think we might have cracked the code. Let's get him back, and I'll tell you kind of the, the switcheroo I made to get on these really finicky fish. Thank you, sir. Well, that midge munching son of a gun is back in the drink, and I cannot tell you how satisfying that is. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's it's figuring it out. It's putting all the right pieces together to make a bite happen. I'm thinking we've spanned like 40, 50 minutes without a fish, but just kind of tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. And what I did is that my first two fish were caught on small midge patterns. Now, those midge patterns, both pretty different, thinking they caught the dumb fish or the aggressive fish, but when the rest of the pod actually got keyed in, they ignored everything I was throwing. So, you know, that's fine. So I put on another section of tippet, you know, one size down, and then I put on a smaller midge. So I went from probably like a 16 to an 18, and then I'm rocking like a 22 right now. And the problem with that is I can't see that 22. There's no way given the current and like the lighting situation that I'm able to see where this fly is even landing. And I'm using a longer lead or two. So a litany of issues. What I did, kind of how we caught that last one, is that I put on a, I don't know, 14 or 16, just a merger. It's a very generic, weird looking parachute thing. But I'm using that as my reference point. Because when I was casting just this size 22 midge, I was guessing on hook sets. So that doesn't really help our chances. But that right there gave me a good idea when I casted where my fly was and in like the, yeah, a foot radius of, okay, it could be here, 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 whatever. And came up, smacked it, set the hook, and yeah, another one to the net. <laughs> so sick. Oh, when you're at the current, you don't leave fish to find fish. So let's get back in there and see if we can't uh, get a couple more midge munchers. So here is another one of those love-hate kind of pet peeves with this river is that, yes, you can see the fish, you can see they're rising, but they are so finicky. So as I was kind of prepping my dry flies, getting them ready to go back in the drink, I sat there. I watched a lot of fish come up, but they were being so finicky. So... We cast it in there a couple more times, but it just wasn't happening. And then eventually they just all together stopped rising. Well, I don't know where our morning went, but this dry fly bite is over and it is officially the afternoon. I think it's time to uh, yeah try our luck a little more upstream. Maybe get back on that uh, dry drop nymph bite or I don't know, it'd be cool if we could find another pod, but yeah, let's go up there and see. Oftentimes in my adventures, the grass is never greener. So as we made our way back upstream, I really didn't like the runs that were available because most of the good ones were occupied by other anglers or it was just too shallow or too deep, whatever. So as we were making our way back towards the truck, I kind of had myself a, a little moral dilemma. You know, it was one of those things where should I stay or should I go? And this is one of those things where you got to know when to hold them, you got to know when to fold them. And I had a sweet plan B burn a hole in my pocket, and I figured it'd be worth a cheeky gander. I mean, what do we have to lose? All right, time check is 1.45 in the afternoon. Yeah, we don't have much time left. I am parked just outside of one of my favorite blue ribbons here in Missouri, that being Blue Springs. We're going to give it a go. Super late last minute plans. I'm just fingers crossed hoping we can get on one fish. That would make my day. So let's, uh, yeah, no more talking. Let's get after it.
Well, he flopped. Oh, that sucks. That was a beautiful, beautiful fish. You got a little look at him though. Sweet. Didn't get skunked up Blue Springs, I love it. And just like that, he's off too. Very good, that's, that's what I wanted, man. That is so perfect. Well, it would seem as though you have made it to the end of the video, and all I gotta say is thank you so much. And it's strange as I'm kinda standing by myself in the middle of a forest, talking to a camera to try and emote how really grateful I am, but it seriously means the world. Every like, every comment, every share and, and subscription, it is, I don't know, man, it's so wild to see how fast it makes this channel grow, and then, yeah, that there's folks out there that like sharing in my antics and following my adventures it's it's seriously so cool so again thank you and if you're really digging what we're doing here on youtube well i got three great pieces of news for you of course we have the instagram the discord and the patreon so go check those out fishy pics community and then a little bit behind the scenes stuff some extra information on the patreon and then one new kind of thing one really sweet little uh adder on is the website so me and my buddy cracked down and we made a pretty, pretty kick-ass little website. So type in flyallseason.com and my ugly mug will pop up for sure. And over there we've got angler guides of pretty much everywhere that I've been kind of uh, chronicling my adventures. We got videos, we have a community page, all sorts of really good stuff. So go check it out. Make sure to, uh, yeah, give it a gander. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff over there. But before I scoot, I got to give three quick shout outs. First and foremost is the Dry Fly Society. They sent over some kick-ass gear, and man, I've been running through it. I love wearing it. And then second would be Ant. Got to give a huge shout out for the rods. They sent me these rods earlier in the summer, and, and dude, I've been using them so much. I really, I really do appreciate it. And then finally, the landing net. Got to give a huge shout out to Hex. Hex has quite possibly the best landing net on the market. I know I love mine, so. Yeah, I've got all the QR codes listed down below if you're interested in any of that gear. And yeah, folks, as this uh, Ozark Mountain winter sun is setting, <laughs> I know, winter, but for real, <laughs> I gotta scoot. I'm almost, uh, almost out of time here. So folks, as always, wherever you find yourself, again, be it in the Ozark Mountains or in your backyard, I sure hope you're keeping those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines.